everyone, it's Lou Collins. Today I'd like to show you a technique using my dies to create a really fun die cut with added colour. And I discovered this completely by accident. So the dies I'm going to be using to get the two different looks for you are my Texture Steampunk type panel dies. I'm going to use these fabulous cogs and gears here. And then I'm also going to go a little bit girly with the Mariposa dies. I'm going to be using this butterfly strip here as well. So I've kind of got a masculine, feminine, girly, not so girly effect here just to show you how you can make it suit any different style or any different occasion. Now what you are going to need as well as a die is uh, some mirror card and I've gone with golden silk, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what colours they are, you can use your scraps, it's perfect for this, if you've got mirror card that's scuffed, got marks on it, whatever it may be, this will be ideal as long as the back is clear. So let's start first of all with the cogs and gears. I'm going to put my, um, my cogs and gears onto my mirror card. Now, if you're really particular about which way round you want your final die cut to be, then you need to die cut onto the uh, white, onto the reverse there. If you're not worried, I just tend to go onto the gold because that's habit, it doesn't matter. Eventually your final piece is going to be flipped from what your die would normally cut So just bear that in mind, especially of course if you are doing a word or a sentiment Which you can absolutely do with this technique So I'm just going to die cut this and I'll also at the same time die cut my butterflies from the silver How awesome is this panel? It's going to be absolutely perfect for things like Father's Day coming up If you've got a brother, a son, a cousin um, or a lady who loves things that are mechanical this is going to be the perfect die like I say this comes from my textures steampunk collection and you can still find it so I'll make sure it's linked down below for you okay so I've got my two different die cuts let's put the butterflies aside for a moment while we work on the cogs and gears now just take a look at the back of your mirror card and kind of um, make sure you know what colour it is. This doesn't seem important right now, but it will be later. Um, make a note of the sort of colour. Is it bright white? Is it off white? Is it a cream? Um, I have found a cardstock that is similar colour. It's a watercolour. So I'm happy that I'm going to be able to use this later on for my base and make everything tone in. Again, you'll see that in the end result anyway. So now I'm going to bring in some colour and I have chosen to go with kind of a rusty and patina look on this particular one. I'm going to go with rusty hinge, peacock feathers and a little bit of black soot as well to really get some depth into the colours. So I'm going to start with the lightest colour peacock feathers and just put this in a couple of areas. I don't want too much of this and I know that the rusty hinge and the peacock feathers together is going to make a green. Then I'm going to go over the rest, pretty much the rest of the uh, cogs and I'm going onto the mirrored side, it's really important you go onto the mirrored side here with the rusty hinge there and then I'm going to just fill in any gaps, just add a few bits of the black soot. The black soot is more of a grey in oxide, this can be done with inks, I am going to do this with distress inks in just a moment. Now I'm going to wipe clean my mat before I do the next stage so just a spritz of water take all of that excess ink off if you prefer if you love your mixed media and you're getting mucky fingers you can of course just sort of smooch that or smoosh that onto a piece of paper for a fun background now I'm going to spritz my mirror card with water and I want quite a bit of water on here and then I'm going to take a scrap of paper And I'm going to turn this over and with a spare piece of acetate I'm just going to press this down. Now what I'm looking for is not the print, we're not worried about what's printing onto the side, I appreciate you've got a light shining on there. What I'm looking for is the edge of the mirror card is picking up some of that ink. So what's happening here is I'm just using the acetate to press down on and sort of squeeze the liquid, the ink, the water out to the edges of the design. Now the die cut edges is seeping up and absorbing this coloured liquid, this ink. Uh, if I just lift that up so you can see a bit more without the glare of the light on there and it's really holding on to the edges of the die cut. 
so now if I lift this up we've got a fabulous print underneath which of course you can use and we've also got a really darkened edged piece here now this might not look like a lot right now but if I just put this onto the same color cardstock so where I said have a look and see what color cardstock you've got at home if you look there how beautiful does that look for a nice subtle effect from your die cut it's almost an outline stamp almost an outline stamp and you could use it as so now I'm going to do this again with the butterfly very quickly and I'm actually going to use inks this time for a little bit of difference and then I'm going to show you another step to this technique which is going to make it even more fun so this time I'm going on to my butterflies with my um, ink I'm using pink and I'm using so the pink is a picked raspberry and I'm going to be using uh, peacock feathers which is the turquoise color just be aware of the ink that's on your mat you don't really want to be smudging your white cardstock underneath in that too much I did it a little bit with the cogs and gears I'm going to try and be a bit more careful this time there we go so I've got my ink on there and the back's pretty clean still so again I'm just going to give this a wipe to get the excess ink off because I don't want that hitting the back of my die cut I only want those edges to grab the color then I'm going to put lots of moisture onto the top here lots of water again bring in my spare paper which is going to absorb some of that moisture I can see it already happening here without even having to press down and help encourage it. So I've got pink around the bottom edge and I've got blue around the top. Now, if you use too much water, you can get this happen so that the entire die cut fills with liquid. That is also going to be due to the uh, detail on the die cut. So the edges are so close together that actually they're kind of meeting, the colours meeting. But as you can see, less down here. And we've just got that lovely pink and blue outline to the entire die cut I've just got a little bit of an area around this part and this part that don't have much on there so I'm going to repeat the process with these and you can repeat this as many times as you wish so just taking a look at that pink and blue, that die cut on there is so beautiful. Now this is probably something you've seen before. If you've inked a die cut and you've flipped it over, looked at the reverse, but have you ever actually thought about using them on your cards? It's so beautiful. Let's add even more depth and dimension to these. So I'm going to re-die cut these two dies to give me like a stencil. So with my two die cuts, I'm going to put these onto my card and use them as stencils to create slight silhouettes. I'm going to use a blending brush and I'm going to use my black soot. I had this out earlier when we were doing the inking onto the cogs. And this is just going to be ever such light inking here. Now you want to bear in mind whereabouts on your card your cogs are going to go or whatever die cut it is. And you want to make sure that you place your stencil which would usually be backwards on in the similar sort of area so I think there will be fine so a little bit of ink and I'm just going to brush outwards from these cogs so not a lot it's just enough to add a little bit of a shadow in amongst some of them so just brushing sort of outwards from the cogs in towards those empty spaces a little it's a really nice technique that's very subtle but it does make a difference there so like I say ever so subtle and then this is going to go over the top so I've then got a little bit of shading in there and I've also got my die cut now I can stick this down either with foam tape or I can put it down completely flat with glue so there are two fun cards with really subtle backgrounds using your die cuts but the reverse of your die cuts with that ink seeping technique throughout them. So I hope you've enjoyed this as another technique to add to your crafting arsenal. Have fun with this. Hopefully you like the dimension that we've achieved there with the foam pads on this one and less so with just the flat glue on this one making it a little more subtle.